Welcome to This Is GAA, the only podcast concentrating exclusively on Ulster men's county and club football at provincial and All-Ireland level. This week, I'm looking forward to the two final Ulster quarterfinals, Derry versus Donegal and Calvin versus Tyrone. I'm also reviewing the Down and Armagh matches where Down and Armagh were victorious as they progressed to the first semi-final matchup in Ulster. First up, Derry versus Donegal. Probably one of the few full houses we can expect at an April Championship game. Derry are overwhelming favourites to win the Ulster title for a third successive season, a feat they've never achieved before. And after the managerial upheaval of last season, they have firmly established themselves at the head of the chasing pack alongside Dublin and Kerry when it comes to All-Ireland status. Indeed, their win over the All-Ireland champions in the Division 1 quarter-final could be the catalyst to bigger and better things for Derry, with Mickey Hart, a manager who get it to Tyrone to three senior titles. If Derry beat Donegal, they'll face Tyrone or Cavan, while Armagh are strongly fancied to progress to the Ulster final from the other side of the draw. Yet, Derry will still have their sights set on the ultimate prize later in the summer, and if they can keep their key players injury-free, they look set to make a bold challenge for their second senior All-Ireland crown. Mickey Hart's reign couldn't have been begun in a more positive manner, with the McKenna Cup and a league title already nestling in the trophy cabinet. Their path back to an Ulster final is, of course, fraught with danger, and this is the first step into the minefield that is this side of the Ulster draw. The Jim McGuinness revolution is in full swing, and Donegal will be back in Division 1 in 2025. That league final win over Armagh ensured that Donegal gained promotion as Division 2 champions. But all eyes will be on this upcoming battle with the Ulster champions of Derry. Jim McGuinness has a fine championship record against Mickey Hart, but Donegal, at the stage that they toppled the Tyrone team last year, found that it was a Tyrone team on the way in during his first tenure. Whereas Derry are very much in their zenith and have established themselves as genuine All-Ireland contenders by claiming the Division 1 title. Even without taking Derry's scalp in Celtic Park, Donegal will be in the All-Ireland series and will be expected to reach the last eight, at least especially if they can get Paddy McBrady, Owen Bond Gallagher and Ryan McHugh back fully fit. I'm backing Derry in this one, but it could end up a lot closer than the bookies are making it. Sunday also sees an interesting tie with Calvin welcoming to Rome. Calvin's promotion aspirations were obliterated by Armagh in which ended in round six, and they ended their Division Two campaign with a lacklustre home defeat to neighbours for Mama. Prior to those losses, Raymond Galligan appeared to be making a decent headway in his first season as manager. That being said, third place in Division Two puts Calvin into the All Ireland Senior Football Championship and not the Tolgen Cup. Getting exposure to top level the opposition can only be a good thing for the Breffney men, and the scalp of Monaghan in the provincial opener proved they could finish out a tight game. However, I feel that this one could be a bridge too far at this stage for the Breffney men. Tyrone have so far failed to win back-to-back games in 2024, and haven't strung two successive victories since defeating Armagh in the final day of the league last year. That followed wins over Kerry and Monaghan, but Tyrone's form this season has been even more erratic. Wins over Roscommon, Mayo and Monaghan kept them in Division 1, but their 21-point hammering to Dublin could have a telling impact on their championship campaign. The Red Hands have responded to adversity brilliantly well in recent times, and their 2021 All-Ireland winning campaign got underway weeks after suffering a 16-point loss to Kerry in the league as well. Yet, that All-Ireland success feels like a long time ago, and Tyrone have a lengthy injury list and major concerns about their form. They're also on the tough side of the provincial draw, and although they should have the quality to win this Ulster quarter final against Calvin, they could easily find themselves uh, in an All Ireland quarter final as well. It's hard to see them progressing much further in either Ulster or indeed Ulster, uh, the All Ireland beyond that quarter final slot. 
and of course the semi-final slot in Ulster. Firstly to Park Esler. Down it through to the last four of the Ulster Championship after a thoroughly unconvincing four-point win over Antrim in a slightly tempestuous game in Park Esler on Saturday. The game finished down not 13 to Antrim's not 9, but there was more incidents off the ball than on it. When the teams met in the league, Down came away from Corrigan Park with a 9-point victory, and Antrim's hopes of closing the gap suffered a major hammer blow midweek when Ray McCann of Achigallon, who scored the vital goal against Wicklow in round 7, was ruled out after having an operation to remove his appendix, and Antrim lacked a focal point in attack. As the teams broke from the pre-match parade, down midfielder Odron Murdoch barraged into Antrim goalkeeper Mick Byrne, and a series of mini scuffles broke out before the throw-in. Barry Cassidy, the referee, booked Murdoch and Joe Finnegan before the game had even got underway. Down made the brighter start with early points from Ryan McAvoy and a free from Pat Havern. However, playing into a strong breeze, they overhit several passes and couldn't assert themselves in the game and could have fallen behind when Finnegan went through on goal after 10 minutes. John O'Hare made a smart save at the expense of 45, which then Byrne converted. A cracking point from play from lively Ryan McQuillan drew Antrim level before Down replied with points from Michal Rooney and Murdoch. Down were good value for their not 6 to not 3 lead at half time with Ryan Johnson splitting the post with a fine point from a mark while Antrim defender Calvin Keenan was slightly fortunate to avoid a second booking moments after his first when he caught Johnson with the high challenge. As the teams went in at half time, there was another altercation between a member of the Antrim backroom team and Downs Connor Francis, who wasn't part of their match day squad. Barry Cassidy issued a red card to Brenton Murphy, Antrim's strength and conditioning coach, and although the Saffrons were adamant that Derry Whistler had singled out the wrong man, this indeed proved correct, and the st- decision was overturned during the week and another member of the backroom staff was cited. Points from Daniel Guinness and Oshin Savage moved down into a five-point lead as the game slipped away from Antrim in the early stages of the second half. In much the same manner as the first, some wayward shooting and poor decision-making from down left the door ajar, and McIntyre side reduced the deficit to three on two occasions with Owen McCabe and Mark Jordan landing good scores. Despite the nine minutes of injury time owing to a lengthy stoppage for an injury to Antrim fullback Union Walsh, the Safferns couldn't engineer a goal, as Down progressed to the Ulster semi-final where they'll face Armagh in a fortnight's time. Armagh showed little mercy as they ruthlessly dispatched Romana in their quarter-final play to Brewster Park, with a final scoreline reading for Mana not 9, Armagh 3-11. They may not have mustered any goals in the last month's league meeting, but the Orchard weren't going to leave in a skill without rippling the net now that the championship has arrived. And the championship is certainly here and it's time for the serious stuff to begin. Armagh could sense for Mana's fragility capitalising on a series of errors to run in three easy goals that left Kieran McGinney's home side home and hosted holes by the break. Thoughts already drifting towards down in a fortnight as the second half fizzled out. Indeed, even from the first ball, they were on top of the uh, Fermanagh kick-out and they were going to have a go at it all day. Stefan Campbell picked up the break from the throw-in and immediately launched a long ball in on top of Bospo. It was a false alarm, but an alarm nonetheless, as Armagh, like the King's Court bands still to come, swiftly settled into their groove. Pushing up on Bogues' kickouts, Ryan O'Neill, making just his second start of the year, and Ben Creeley ensured there would be no escape for the Ironmen as they found themselves hemmed in time and again. Andrew Mernon popped over Connor Turbot's over after Connor Turbot's shot had been blocked, before O'Neill curled over a sumptuous effort to double their early lead. Then came the first of several moments that will leave for Manor boss Cairn Donnelly twisting and turning in the dead of night. Six minutes in, surrounded by Joe McElroy and Cairn Macken, 
Alton Clem looked to be heading down a cul-de-sac beneath the stand until arching a superb left foot pass towards Oshing Smith in the square. Armagh goalkeeper Blaine Hughes had come out to collect but Smith got in ahead of him before turning and looking the goal dead in the eye. The only problem was Aaron McKay was hovering right in the middle and that's where Smith sent in the shot. The ball striking the drumming team man on the line before it was cleared to safety. Maybe it's being wise after the event to say that had to go in for Fermanagh to stand any chance. But whoever it is framed, everything started to slide rapidly downhill from here. Again, Clem was at the start of the game's next major moment. This time for the wrong reasons. As he undercooked the pass played as his undercooked pass played Shane McGullion into trouble. Mernon won the ball, and as he bounded upfield with that familiar loping stride, he found himself being hauled to the ground by Clem. The Aaron Gales man was shown a black card, and in that ten minute period spent on the sidelines, Arma ran in two goals and effectively killed off for Manus Hopes. Pushing Paddy Burns on to take advantage of the extra man, Arma eventually broke the Aaron resolve. Rory Grugan, the architect, as he turned away from Smith too easily before cutting into the square and hand passing across for Turbot to finish to an empty net. Two minutes later, Kane McManus was caught in possession and Armar weren't in the form for simply keeping the scoreboard ticking over. With the scent of blood in their nostrils, Campbell, Jory O'Burns and Mernon exchanged passes and when Mernon's shot was well saved by Bogue, Burns was free at the back post to tap hole. Fermanagh's naivety was telling at times, but Armagh deserved credit for inflicting the maximum punishment. This is what supporters have been asking them, they, of them for years, and at last they're beginning to deliver. Macken curled over after a Fermanagh kick-out malfunction, which was pretty often at this stage. Jory O'Burns could well have bagged his second goal of the day instead of fisting over, and Merlin almost found the net after directing a wayward O'Neill free into Bogues' arms before the third goal eventually arrived, six minutes before the break, and it was another calamity from a Fermanagh point of view. This time, Clem and Garwin Jones got on each other's road, 50 metres from their own goal. Turbot hoovered up the possession, and within a matter of seconds, the ball was walked into the goal, McElroy and Mernon combining for Campbell to finish easily into an open goal. Fermanagh, not one, Arma 3-4. If it had been a boxing match, the towel would have already came in. Yet, it says something of the switch in the arm of Seiki that, the brave, that a brave Mac and Block getting down onto Cassidy's boot drew as big a roar from the Orchard support as any of the three goals. That spirit, that togetherness, even when coasting, it's what they want to see. Unsurprisingly, the second half was a non-event. Maybe not for Fermanagh, who took some hurt from breaking even with the 14 points shared evenly, with Clem determined to make his mark, while O'Brien's endeavours also caught the eye. But it was realistically challenge match stuff by then, Armagh largely minding themselves while the clock ticked down. Aaron McKay was whipped off the second he picked up a yellow card, replaced by Barry McCambridge, while the level of comfort enjoyed allowed the Orchard to roll the bench and hold O'Neill and Mernon back for the next day. Oshin O'Neill, Aidan Nugent and Tiernan Kelly Meanwhile, all got much needed minutes ahead of what Arma hope will be a long and fruitful summer. The first rung of the ladder negotiated with considerable ease. Down or up next, and in the evidence of this weekend's quarterfinals, it might not be reasonable to expect more of the same after the Mourne County's uninspiring win over Antrim. However, having found themselves treading water at times on the way to promotion from Division 3, the prospect of another crack at the noisy neighbours will whet the appetite of Conor Lafferty and co. With last year's penalty shootout to Derry still niggling, Arma would dearly love to get back into another Ulster final and put things right. They can't afford to be lulled into a false sense of security before then though. If you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe, like or share depending on what platform you're on. You can also join in the conversation in the comments section on YouTube or my social media links that are also in the podcast description. The podcast is available in audio on Spotify and Amazon and on video on YouTube. You can also join with me on social media. The links, as I've said, are in the description. So leave a comment in the comment section or drop me a line on Twitter X or Facebook. Do you think the GA season is compressed too much at inter-county level? 
Is the current ticketing system working? Have the provincial championships been devalued by linking, by linking the All Ireland group stages to league positions? And what suggestions would you have to make the season better for fans? This is GAA. I'm Jerry. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Have a good weekend watching your county or club. Yes, the club seasons are also up and running in the midst of this squeezed county season. I'm also hoping, I'm hoping to get some golf in this weekend and of course I'll be watching United once again. Have a good one everyone. Enjoy yourselves, whatever county you go to watch and uh, stay safe while travelling.